Another teacher who had a significant impact on me was Miss Haltine. I'm gonna have some kitty help for this video, evidently. I had her for homeroom in uh, junior high. I have to explain a bit about what this homeroom was like before proceeding with any story or memories. Because I came from an abused home, I had a lot of emotional issues. And for my own safety, the, the administration decided to put me into the classroom with other children who had behavioral disorders as well as mental disorders. So it was a BD slash LD class. That's how we knew it. And Miss Haltine taught them en masse, both 7th and 8th grade, together, same classroom, same time. And for the majority of the school day, I was in that one room at Flynn Middle School at the age of 12, and also 13. Uh, the only time we would ever really get to leave is if we had a class elsewhere in the school, which was not common, or um, PE, and uh, the lunchroom. Now, she was a good educator. She knew her material. She was well-rounded. We did a lot of things uh, like um, we did mathematics. I don't remember science too clearly. Uh, there was communication. We had, there was actually a course in communication, mostly conflict resolution and things like that. Uh, some social things, and the rest is kind of a blur. It doesn't really stand out in any way that I can remember. It was too long ago. And um, they had a points system. All of us students could earn 30 points per day, and they were given in five-point increments for each hour, each period, really. And if there were behavioral incidents, then points were deducted. First we get our name taken, which would be one point off. Then the, 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 the second occurrence would be a three minute timeout. She would give timeouts, which is a little inappropriate for the age group, but we'll come back to that. And then five minute timeouts for extreme infractions, like if we threw something, or if we swore, or if we were disrespectful to her, things like that. What I took issue with, and still do to this day, was the method. The methods were just incorrect. Because it was... It was an easy system to work with. But it also wasn't very punishing. It didn't feel like there were really any uh, major... It was any, anything major. You, know, you could just take the, t take the time and deal with it. Now if you had 25 or more points, then you were considered to have had a good day, with the maximum being 30. Fewer than that usually meant a talking to and possibly further disciplinary action. And people just weren't allowed to have a bad day. Also in this classroom, individuality was discouraged. Anything that made us stand out, unless it was academic standing out, was discouraged. Um, being different, or having... I, I want to say having different interests, because that's, that was certainly encouraged, but not developed. But... Um, it wasn't singing in the, for any reason. There wasn't play of any kind. If you just if you told a joke, sometimes depending upon the nature, whether it was harmless or whether it was a dirty joke, th there would be punishments accordingly, or not. Um, and it felt like everything had to be a conflict. And there were things with her that did not need to be discussions that were discussions, arguments that did not need to become memories. Uh, one instance I can remember was, 
I needed to wash my glasses. I had them on a lot at that age, and they were naturally smudgy in the lenses. And I would occasionally put my hand up and ask if I might go wash my glasses, because I want to be able to see. And this almost always led to an interrogation. What are you going to wash them with, and what are you going to dry them with, and how long will you be gone, and things like that. And I'm like, what is with the interrogation? Just let me wash my damn glasses. It, it shouldn't require this kind of thing. It's either a yes or no question. Not like I need to give answers to, to these questions before I can be permitted to go and do something that I need to do. Evidently, I can learn without seeing. Another time, There were talking to's about things that really didn't require that. For a writing assignment, we were asked to write our own obituary. And uh, I had no experience with that. I'm 12. So uh, I, I knew from the newspaper uh, that, peop that oftentimes there were people's names, their age, what the cause was, sometimes got listed, and funeral arrangements. Beyond that, it wasn't really a, a, a life story of any kind. And there are some people who do write obituaries in that way that I just described. So that's what I did. I didn't know any better. I picked the age of 53, I think, and heart disease as the cause, and that was that. And she felt the need to talk to me about it. Why did you pick those things? I think maybe it was uh, to encourage me to talk more, come out of my shell, because I was really isolated. I was afraid to deal with people because of all the trauma I'd been through in previous school years. And I just didn't want to talk. I didn't want to interact with people. I didn't want to have to explain myself. But I did the assignment, so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure why it needed to be discussed. And like, 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 like there was something... Yeah, you know, I may I may as well put down suicide as the cause for all the discussion we had about it over this very trivial thing. Other times she'd do sneaky things, or things that I felt like were a violation. It had to be uh, the spring, um, I forget which year, might have been the second year, might have been eighth grade. I was outdoors on my lunch break with, with uh, other schoolmates, and my best friend Mike. And we were heavily into playing role-playing games at the time. And we would make up characters and scenes, and sometimes we'd just improvise, and we'd just have, have some back and forth, something fun to do that was the break of, uh, of school learning. And it was just harmless fun. And at one point, I remember chasing him around the green. It wasn't exactly... A we, it would not be a, a playground by any means because junior high you don't play and awkward to do so it was just a big green patch behind the school that faced the parking lot and maybe some trees maybe some foliage and of course I chased him around the screen as part of our game and of course Miss Haltine observed from the upper level the second floor balcony of the school just stood there and watched, and evidently she missed the part where Mark, Mike chased me back. He chased me back, and that, that was just how we were having fun and also getting some exercise. She felt the need to talk to me about it later. Of course, she doesn't know. She doesn't know what we're doing, but, and, and, and maybe it did look violent, but um, no. When I explained myself and what we were doing, I, I just said, we were just playing. And her response was a sarcastic, we were just playing. And I had to take an in-school suspension for that because of what it looked like, rather than what it actually was. So even with questioning and investigation, um, <sighs> things like that. And... I was not benefiting from this in any way. I was not growing from this in any way because it felt like a constant battle. I 
was just figuring out the world, all of us were. And it felt like a constant battle to, to, to stay in the good day column because anything I did felt like a punishable offense. If I was different or quirky, then uh, that was frowned upon. And this is how I ended up with no personality for a good period. I didn't know who I was when I left junior high. I didn't really understand myself at all. And I felt like I, I came away from it not really having learned anything. Partly because of the classroom I was in, I wasn't really challenged in any way. We had very basic mathematics, like third grade level mathematics in the eighth grade. And after a couple months of that, I, I told her, I, I need something more appropriate for my level because we're, we're, do, we're still doing basic multiplication and please my dear Aunt Sally operations. And <clears throat> it, it just seemed inappropriate. There wasn't any, any growth. And what was it going to be like when I get to high school? So I did get to have a mathematics class elsewhere. But, uh, of course, there were spies. We were going to have a solar eclipse. And uh, there was something with a, with a paper clip and, a, a, and construction paper or something. I don't know. For some reason, I had, the, I had the paper clip in my hands at my desk. And we were in groups of four. And... I was just fiddling with it, just couldn't stop playing with it, and finally the teacher snatched it out of my hand, and when I reacted to that, of course he told Miss Holtine, and she felt the need to come down on me for that, and her reaction was, well, if a teacher and a student have a disagreement, who do you think is going to win? And there is some logic to that, yes, teachers are experienced, students are not. But she used that argument for virtually everything, to win to win and to get her way. And I didn't profit from this in, at all. I couldn't have because it, it defeated any kind of logical argument, no matter how right I might be, no matter how violated I might be, by you know, how offended I might be, because my feelings matter, my opinions matter, and he certainly had no right to snatch things out of my hands. I have trauma because of people snatching things out of my hands, like that teacher, or Greg Gilsdorf, or... Um, I'm sure there are others. I'm sure there are others, and I don't need to bring them up into this video. <clears throat> but I do find that the methods that she employed just did not work, because I continued to be an offensive child, and I grew up into a, 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 a bitter, lonely one in high school. Because, again, I still couldn't talk to people. Despite having all those communications courses and lessons, they were really pansy responses. I remember an assignment of uh, how we were going to resolve just any vague conflict. We were supposed to write about something. And, of course, the suggestion to me, I don't know why I got this one. It wasn't random. Uh, the suggestion to me was uh, two boys approach you in the school bathroom and ask you to do drugs with them. How do you, uh, how do you assert yourself to say no? Uh, like, <laughs> at, at that age, I'm a hateful kid. I'm probably going to do drugs with them. So, <laughs> okay, uh, that kind of nonsense. It, it, it didn't encourage me to think for myself. It didn't encur encourage me to want to, uh, to want to learn these things. What I was taught was, make up your mind to do it, or else. I would not say she was strict. She was very even, I suppose. You know, very balanced, but same level for virtually everything. I think as a teacher, maybe she'd seen it all. And uh, it, it was non-threatening. But it was non-nurturing either. There was the, the, the vague middle ground where that, that makes it impossible to describe accurately. Cat. Anyway, 
She had a significant impact on me because it made me retreat further into my shell at the age of 12 or 13. Lightning bolt! She made me retreat further into my shell at the ages of 12 and 13. And I don't believe that was the intention, but that was certainly the result. Because I was still a crying little bitch at the age of 14 in high school, and I had no methods for conflict resolution and dealing with the issues and other peers who were just figuring out the world. And uh, the impact was I didn't get anything out of it. The impact was that I just, I look back at it and I think, what was the point of that? I could have had the same exact experience by not being in her classroom at all. And in, fa in fact, it might have made me a little stronger. Instead, it weakened me, and I have a, a few really cringy memories from interactions with my classmates in that, in that stifling little room. Don't want to talk about them because then I get into classmates and stories that I kind of sort of remember that happened over 30 years ago. So, no need. But suffice it to say that uh, this, it was a negative impact on me and that happens. She was not a bad person and not a bad educator by any means. But the methods, timeouts are for six-year-olds. And all it taught me was that I could do pretty much anything and the worst I would suffer would be a timeout. Or an in-school suspension in the corner for, the, for a full day, writing endlessly and meeting, trying to meet some really insane standards to get out of it so I don't finish, have to finish the work the next day. Just didn't get much out of that. But the impact was significant.